All yeah. right. Catherine and Herbert, and thank you very much for your time. Welcome to Dargeted Wet Scene from uh, Lima, Peru. So, first of all, how are you, by the way? How have you been? How is the band? Uh, hello, Pedro. Thank you for the interview. Um, I'm great. The band is good. All of us are in good health, as far as I know. And, yeah, currently working hard on promoting the the new Dragony album. Well, that sounds that sounds good. Well, as you know, this is our first uh, interview with Dragony for Dark Yet yeah. So maybe can you give us a, a little bit of the story of the band? Maybe introduce the band to your fans here in Latin America or people probably that yeah. uh, may discover the band through the website. <clears throat> uh, Dragony was founded in 2007 as a studio project under a different name. Uh, back then we called ourselves the Dragon Slayer Project. But uh, pretty soon we evolved into a real band uh, with regular rehearsals and the will to play live shows. And uh, so this, the idea of the studio project got abandoned and we started to record the first album, uh, Legends. And with the recording of the record and the, our first label deal with Limp Music, uh, there came a name change because the Dragon Slayer project was a little bit too stiff. And we changed the name to Dragony. Then we did, uh, we released Legends via Limp Music from Germany. And the two next records too, plus an EP. And after the last record with Limp Music, which was called Masters of the Multiverse, uh, we switched and signed the deal with Napalm Records. And right now uh, we are one month away from releasing the fourth uh, Dragon Age album. It's called Viribus Unitis via Napalm Records. Ah, I see. So this is going to be your first album, as you said, with Napalm Records. So yeah. uh, how are you feeling with this change of level? Is it going to be better for the band? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, well, we feel great about the change because Napalm is one of the biggest metal labels out there and they are growing yeah. every day, it seems. Like, I think yesterday they announced that they... Uh, bought SPV records and Steamhammer with all the bands that are involved there. So the, these are now part of the Napalm family too. And it's great to work with Napalm. They have such a huge infrastructure. They really give you the feeling they believe in you, in your band, in your product. And there's for all kinds of things that may come up during this process of writing songs, recording a record, releasing it, there's always someone to talk to. And for us it's great because Napalm has so much reach worldwide. I think Napalm Records, every metalhead knows the label. Sure. And to be in this roster of Napalm Records with so many great bands, with so many big, huge bands, um, is just great for us. All right, well, that sounds cool then. Congratulations, actually, for, for that. Uh, and well, you mentioned that you are releasing in around a month your yeah. fourth album, actually. Yeah, Viribus yeah. Unities. Uh, as I, I was reading, this is going to be like a kind of a concept album again. Yes. Uh, I think the previous one also was a kind of a concept album. If I am wrong, it's most of the songs were around one idea. Um, well, the, the previous album was not a concept album per se, mm -hmm. like Iripus Unitis is. In Iripus Unitis, we tell a complete story ah, I from see. the first track to the last one. And the previous record was uh, just themes and video games and movies and books from our childhood. And uh, or which had a huge influence on us. So there are a few songs about video games on the last record. 
So the Viracus Unitis is just a story from start to finish. And it's a rather interesting story, I would say. All right. Well, uh, and about that, uh, I, I was reading about uh, actually the story for this new album. Can you tell us maybe a little bit about that? And who was in charge of the concept of this new album? Who wrote the lyrics? Um, well, the idea uh, to make a concept album, had, uh, we had the idea to make a concept album right after we finished Masters of the Multiverse. And uh, then one day our singer came with a script, with a little story, and uh, he gave it to us and said, yeah, guys, take a look at this, read it, what do you think? And it was basically the story that's now on the record. And yeah, we read it and said, hmm, let's do this. It's uh, because uh, we are, all of us are uh, big fans of movies like Inglourious Bastards or Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer, where you take real historic people mm -hmm. and historic circumstances and give it your own twist. You make your own version of the timeline. And we did that with this Dragon story. It is uh, the end of the Habsburg monarchy, which was uh, one of the great empires, like the French Empire was before that, and on Napoleon, like the British Empire was huge at one point, like the Romans way before that, or the Egyptians. And the Habsburg monarchy is one of the most recent ones, if not the recent empire that fell, like all empires do. And so, especially in Austrian memory, this is still very fresh. Mm -hmm. And we thought, yeah, we we'll take this story, we we'll take the end of the monarchy and give it our own spin with dark magic, with undead, with demons, with what have you. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, I was surprised by this and it sounds really cool. And I can see that it's all like uh, reflected even on, on, the, on the cover of the album, which is yep. really, really cool. Um, and what? Uh, uh, by the way, who designed uh, the cover of the, the new album? It's really, um, really good. Yeah, well, thank you. And uh, the cover artist is Dusan Makovic from Serbia. Uh, we've worked with him before on Master of the Multiverse, on the Lords of the Hunt EP, and on Shadowplay. Oh, I see. And uh, we love to work with him because he uh, really does that what we want for the Dragony covers with a detailed central figure but also a very nice background and his style of drawing is we think is perfect for Dragony. Yeah well that was actually uh, really cool and I can see that he has been working with you uh, he really really uh, Describe, I think, what is what is this all about in the cover of yeah. the album, and and well, talking about about the music, uh, are there many differences between this uh, new album and Master of the Universe? Uh, well, for what I was listening, the band actually has been growing a lot, and I had a chance to hear uh, yeah. one of the songs. You, I think, Tommy Johansson was collaborated yeah. in this song. And yeah, it sounds very powerful, straight, melodic. Yeah. It's really, it sounds really cool. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about the musical direction for this album? Yes, of course. Um, we tried to evolve our songwriting and take the next steps. And uh, what we really want, uh, tried to do, and I think we achieved that, is, for example, uh, we don't have an orchestration in every track. But in the tracks where we have it, we wanted to give it more room. So you, you could really hear an, that there is an orchestra playing. And uh, in, on previous records, we also had the, an orchestration, but sometimes it was a little bit too much of everything. 
So this time we tried to diversify the songwriting um, and give every part a little bit more room and make everything more impactful that way. Uh, I see. Um, well, uh, what I was listening, actually it sounds really, really, really cool, really straight, very powerful. And yeah, I can notice that uh, there is a uh, much control in the symphonic parts, as you mentioned. Um, and well, there's something I'm curious about. Uh, you know, we are all suffering this problem with the pandemic. I live yeah. in Peru, where I live, the problem is quite big. So in this case, did it change much about the way uh, how the band was uh, composing the album with the previous one? How do you work with that? Uh, um, each one at home? I don't know. It, it didn't change much. Mm -hmm. uh, for the past uh, many years, we've been a band that works mostly online. Ah, I see. And we exchange ideas online and we work on ideas online. And then uh, everybody who has the time uh, gathers in the studio and works to finish the song. As soon as we all approve a song, uh, usually uh, some of us has an idea and presents it to the other guys. And then we listen to it and we say, yeah, we can do something out of this for Dragony, or we maybe put it on the shelf for later, or yeah, that's maybe something for a different project or a different band. And if we take a song idea or a song for Dragony, then we gather in the studio and uh, finish it. Uh, so this has not really changed, but we, we did more work online, less work in person this year and for this record. Oh, I see. Oh, well, that sounds cool. So more or less you work, uh, this, didn't, this uh, hasn't changed much, as I can see. And well, as you said, it seems that most of you or, or there are members in the band that are involved in other projects. Uh, if I am wrong, uh, I mean again, there are question. there are there are band members that are involved uh, are in other bands, maybe in other projects. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, our singer Siegfried was a part of was the singer for Visions of Atlantis also. Ah, yeah, remember uh, until uh, he had to step back from Visions of Atlantis because with his 40-hour day job it was not possible to tour that much. And I am still involved with Visions of Atlantis. I'm still a part of it. Uh, I see. Um, and well, um, in this case, uh, and well, now that I mentioned about this huge problem with the pandemics, I saw on the news that there are countries in Europe that are receiving now probably a vaccine. I'm not sure how positive are the news for uh, European countries. Uh, can we, are you planning maybe uh, concerts for the next year or is it still, there is still this uncertainty? Um, there is a huge uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, every, every country does, does their own thing. I see. And even sometimes in the countries, each region does their own thing. And so there's, it's very hard to plan a tour right now. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen bands postponing their tours to the end of 2022. So we are in talks about touring with this record, but there's nothing sure yet. There's nothing to be announced yet. Um, we are planning to do a release show in our home city in Vienna and Austria, uh, middle of February. Um, we don't know if it can happen or if the pandemic will be too strong, there will be another hard lockdown or not. We don't know mm -hmm. yet. We are planning to do it. We are in talks about or planning to do um, a streaming concert with details to be announced soon, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a few other surprises up our sleeves, which we will share, of which we will share details as soon as they are ready to be announced and as soon as the whole situation with the pandemic is secure enough that we think that we can hold a date. I understand. 
And well, you also mentioned a, a post, well, probably an streaming concert. This is a question that we we'll like to ask to most musicians that we interview because I know that opinions are divided. <laughs> so what is your personal opinion about these streaming concerts, actually? Uh, do you like it much or, well, there's nothing else that we can do? Uh, what's um, your opinion? It is... It's like drinking an alcohol-free beer. <laughs> okay. There's... <laughs> Yeah, it's it looks right. It's it looks right. It sounds right. <laughs> I don't know if you see it. <laughs> yeah, I see it. It almost tastes right, but there's something missing. And it's it's yeah. I'm I personally am not super fond of these online concerts. But I've watched a few, and I've watched less online concerts than shows I would have gone to. I see. Um, yeah. And well, well, because of this uh, current situation, I I'm not sure if it's because of the pandemic, but I saw a lot of uh, bands releasing albums uh, this year, and yeah. they had an album the previous year, I mean, just a year before, so... There has been a lot of work. I'm not sure if it's because of the pandemic. So, uh, well, I'm not sure if you have, you seem to be very busy between two bands, but I'm not sure if you had time to, do you still have time to listen to to music now? And what's your opinion about the releases in this 2020? Um, I had a little bit of time to listen to music. And like you said, there was a lot of new music this year. That is... I think that is a huge part because bands cannot tour, but they still want to do their job and they still want to make music. And so they go into the studio and make new music instead of going on tour for a year or something like that. Um, a few releases uh, this year I listened to and liked were, for example, Arion Transitus. Mm -hmm. Liked it very much. Like I love every Arian album, but uh, I catch myself listening to the source more. The previous Arian record. Mm, I see. And any favorite album, maybe a power metal album from 2020 that you like much? Uh, I really grew fond of Unleash the Archer Apex, but I don't know if it was 2019 or 2020. Uh. Well, they released an album this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Abyss. Yeah. Yeah, it was this yeah. year. It's a really cool album. Yeah, I had the chance to listen to that too. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, the new Brothers of Metal is also a very good album. I don't remember the album title right now. I see. I, I, like, okay. the new, I, I like the new Windrose too. But I don't know if it was this year or last year. It's yeah. I mean, um, I with this pandemic situation, and for me, it's strange to be at home so much. And I work in home office with my day job uh, right now, and the whole year is kind of a blur. <laughs> I couldn't say what what I can't say what has happened in which month. Yeah, I understand. Well, uh, in my case, I even lose, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what day is today, for example, sometimes yeah. I had to use my Google Calendar because, yeah, yeah, I spend so much time at home that every day looks more or less the same sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Complicated. I see. Um, and well, and, and well, going back to the album, you had a chance to work with Tommy Johansson. How was the experience, yep. by the way, of working with him? I really like, actually, uh, his compositions with his band, Majestica. They released a Christmas power metal album yeah. on December. I, I still have to listen to that. It's, <laughs> it, it's on my list. Um, yeah. yeah it, uh, the main work of... Uh, the, the main person to work with Tommy from Sabaton was our singer Siegfried. Mm -hmm. They are uh, good friends. 
from what I know, and they are in contact regularly. And yeah, they talked about one. I think the story goes uh, one day that our singer Siegfried said to Tommy, "Yeah, we're gonna start uh, writing the new Dragony album, and it's gonna be a theme thing with the concept story." And then, what I know is that Tommy said, "Yeah, wait a minute, maybe I have something for you." And so this, the 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 basic idea from the song came from Tommy and a friend of Tommy. And then Tommy and his this friend uh, Thomas Swedin, I uh, mm -hmm. I think is his name. Um, Thomas Swedin, I think. Um, and Siegfried, they work together on the song. I see. Yeah, that sounds really. That's actually a very powerful song. So that's it's cool. It's cool that you had a chance to to work with him. Um, and well. Before we finish, uh, as you said, you are still in Vision of Atlantis and also with Dragony. Uh, yeah. How how can you deal actually with, <laughs> with working with two bands? Uh, in this case, is it very difficult for you? Um, it it works. Sometimes it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's really a lot to do, and Visions of Atlantis usually is on tour very much. It's a lot of on tour. There are a few tours a year, and uh, if that happens, that visions that I am with Visions of Atlantis somewhere, and Dragony has a show, then uh, I have uh, someone who could who can uh, do the show on the bass guitar for me. But usually, I try to fit both bands in my schedule, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of work, but it's also great fun. And I wouldn't miss any second of it. <laughs> okay. Um, and with Vision of Atlantis, you had a chance to come to Latin America. And actually, I, I yeah. saw Vision of Atlantis here in my country, in Peru. Uh, and well, how was the experience? Are there any plans maybe for Dragony to come to Latin America in the future? Um, the, um, the Latin America tour with Visions was a crazy experience. Because we had a show every day, and had to fly from each from one country to the next, so it was very little sleep, oh, and a lot of traveling. But it was great. I do it do it again in a heartbeat, and I'm I'm really fond of South America, and I had a great time everywhere, and yeah, I'd do it again uh, with Dragony. Of course, we would do. The same thing, but uh, b before we can do that, uh, I think we have to build an audience. We have to build, uh, yeah, to get our, our music out to the people, so sure. that that it's that we don't come to, I don't know, Colombia and play in front of twenty people. So. But of course, we'd be up for something like that anytime. All right. And um, well, the time for to finish with, with this interview, uh, it is coming. Uh, please, is there anything that you would like to say to uh, people here in Latin America? Uh, I would say stay strong, stay healthy. We, the whole world, is in this pandemic together. We have to sit it out and until then rock on all right well uh thank you very much for your time for this interview again well congratulations for the new album what i was listening until now it sounds very very powerful of course we will post a review in dark uh, soon so well we wish you all the best uh, all the best with the new album thank you very much again uh, thank you for the interview and all the best greetings to Peru and have a good afternoon. <laughs>